Right, welcome to the Feeder Masterclass. We're here at First and Reservoir today, and I'm gonna run you through my top five tips for big water bream. When you're fishing big waters, something that can happen and does happen a lot is you'll get there, clip, clip up at say 55, 60 metres, and you'll be chucking nicely, hitting the clip, everything's great, and then an hour into your session, the wind gets up, it's, and you're struggling. You can't hit the clip, your bait's going all over the place, and all of a sudden you're not catching anymore. One of the reasons I tend to use what I call a stepped up setup is to counter that. You know, I mean, everyone says, oh, it's a lovely fish playing rod. There's no good having a lovely fish playing rod if you can't actually cast to the required mark. So today I'm fishing 60 metres. I'm using a 13 foot tournament distance. Yes, it's maybe slightly more powerful than I need. But what it's doing is making casting easy. And say I do need a bit more backbone uh, to get the distance. I've got it in the rod. I'm not maxing out the rod. Uh, but at the same time, yes, it's quite a powerful rod. But when you hook a fish, just take your time. Even on braid, like I'm on today, take your time, and the fish isn't going to come off. It's more important, accurate casting, because if you don't cast accurately and build the swim, you're not going to get bite. So if you're in doubt about rod choice, step it up a little bit, go a little bit heavier than you need, and make casting that little bit easier. What's happened today at Thursday is, I've had fish in my swim and I feel I'm not catching them. When I say I've got fish, the reason I know, I've been getting tiny little knocks and taps on the feeder, but I'm not getting any bites. I've been fishing what I call conventional feeders, like rockets, little cages, that type of feeder. Long hook length, short hook length, maggots, worms, just nothing. Indications, no fish. One of the things about Thurston is it's heavily carp fished. So they see boilies and pellets and fish meal, them, them type of baits. So I've just made a switch to the large hybrid and all I'm doing just filling it with ground bait with a few micros in and I've got a white or a yellow wafter on just the six mil version and straight away I've had two pop of bream and I mean had I stayed on the open end I honestly don't believe I'd have caught those fish and the fish I have caught on the open end have been a lot smaller so if you are out bream fishing and you're getting indications don't be afraid to try the method or the big hybrid On big waters, quite often you'll have to fish at a decent distance. You know, I mean, take today, fishing at 60 metres. And one of the important parts of that is then is choosing the right feeder. You know, I mean, I don't really care who you are. If you're fishing light 60 metres, you're not going to do it with just a standard cage. So you've got to use what I call a distance type feeder. Now, there's pretty much three types that I use. The first one, and perhaps most well known, is, is what I call the Kevin Leach type design. If you can see, it's got the lead at the bottom. So it's, it's a cage, but it's weight forward in design. These are, I don't call these what extreme long range feeders. You can't chuck them to the moon, if that makes sense. But up to sort of 60 meters in the right conditions, you know, in a 30, 40 gram Kevin Leach, and that, you'll cast there every day of the week. But if the wind does get up, then something like a rocket feeder, as you can see, the name comes from the lead at the bottom, shaped like a rocket, that'll cast that little bit further. There's two types of rockets I use. This is the Cresta one. The main difference is, is where the lead's situated. If you see with the Matrix one at the bottom, the lead's situated very close to the cage and the lead's tapered. The Matrix one will cast further than the Cresta one, just purely to do with shape. But what I like about the Cresta one, if I just put the Matrix one, is I can get my fingers in underneath. So it's easy to load and I think it gives good bait release. But if distance is all important, then it's just a case dropping the bait in that one and that one will cast that little bit further. So three types of feeders, each of them do a different job. Hook bait wise, I'm a bit of a traditionalist as in bream fishing, particularly on big waters. And I always like to start off either fishing bunches of dead maggots or alternatively baits like worm. But what you have to be aware of it is the modern swing towards like baits sort of like wafters, mini boilies. If your bream water's heavily carp fished, then yet yeah, worms and maggots will still work. But baits like these little fluoro wafters, 
Bream are going to love them. They're used to seeing them. They see them day in, day out, and they're almost going to regard them as a natural food source. So I guess the message I'm trying to get home is don't be afraid to vary your hook baits, particularly if you're getting indications. Don't just sit there thinking, well, one will, one will eat what I've got in the hook in, the, in a minute, because chances are it won't. So chop and change. If you're feeding a lot of dead maggots and you're fishing worm on the hook, try a bunch of maggots. But if you just want to try something totally different, then a little six mil wafter might just produce a couple of extra fish. When it comes to feeder fishing, I'm always a big believer in making it happen as opposed to waiting for it to happen. So like throughout the course of a session, I'll just be chopping and changing what I'm putting through the ground bait. I'm a massive believer in that bring love worms. You know, I mean, having said that today, <laughs> worms have been the kiss of death. But if I'm in any doubt, then I always think I'll up the worms, they've got loads of attraction and they'll pull fish. But it has been obvious today that's not been right. But equally a case, I could have just sat there plowing worms in saying there's nothing here. Whereas I just felt worms weren't working. So I've switched to more sort of modern baits like pellets, like sweet corn, putting plenty of them in, and put that on the bottom so there's a nice bed there. And I mean, just changing what you're putting through the feeder can make a massive difference. When I say a massive difference, I don't mean like piling worms in for 10 chucks, then having one chuck without. You're not going to learn anything that way. You've got to give it sort of half an hour, maybe longer without. So today, for instance, I fed worms for the first sort of hour, only had one bite, cut them out, and within 25, 30 minutes, started to get a few indications and catch a few fish. That's what I mean by sort of chopping and changing. So if it's not happening, think about what you're putting through the feeder and how you can change it.